we spent some time in Canada recently preaching and teaching and met some wonderful believers and some wonderful Christians that met us there. It is my surprise that many of them did not attend a traditional church. They did not attend uh, what we call a traditional local fellowship or church. Many of them met in homes and in groups isolated from other churches. It is my surprise that in the Western democracies, Protestant democracies like the US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, um, like I said, Canada was my surprise, that we find true Christians finding hard, a difficult time, finding a hard time, uh, finding fellowship, finding scriptural based churches. I don't mean a perfect church. Uh, like the old saying goes, there is no such thing as a perfect church and if you find one, don't join it, you'll ruin it. But I'm talking about a church, a scriptural church, uh, that is based on the Word of God, that is based on the lifting up of the name of Jesus, the preaching of the gospel, the fellowship of the Spirit, uh, things like true doctrine and honest leaders, uh, financially honest leaders, uh, things that you would basically find in the fundamentals of the book of Acts. That's what I'm referring to. Christians are finding more and more um, a difficult time, more and more, finding churches like that. It is unbelievable to me and my surprise to me that it's happening in the U.S. as well as Canada. It is becoming like the persecuted church. In many places in the world, the persecuted church uh, meet in homes, they meet in isolated villages, they meet in small groups, and these Christians uh, find their teaching and doctrine from the internet, like YouTube videos such as this. And it's interestingly enough, uh, they cannot find local churches, so they have to resort to Bible teachings on the internet. So it's becoming more and more like that. At a time where we need to understand the Bible, when we need to go deeper into God's Word and understand uh, what, what's ahead for the coming of Jesus as the world gets darker, we find more and more churches, I mean whole line of denominations, getting further and further away from true, do true doctrine in the Word of God. Uh, I mean, I'm, denominations that are so cut up in things that are not even biblical. They're getting away from things like the sufficiency and the inerrancy of the Word of God, things like the resurrection, denying the resurrection, but more and more into making an emphasis and an affirmation into homosexual ordination, same-sex marriage, left-wing political activism, Marxist the ideologies, and social justices. That's what's replacing the true gospel and the true teaching of the Word of God. You have leaders, evangelical leaders, Tony Campolo, Brian McLaren, who are affirming homosexual marriage, affirming homosexuality in the church. You have movements like Hillsong. You have movements like Bethel and its mysticism. You have mystics like Bill Johnson, who is ahead of Bethel. You have the ecumenical movement of like Rick Warren. You have seeker-friendly movements. You have the prosperity gospel and the word of faith movement. These are things that are contrary to the word of God, but yet this is what is being emphasized in more and more churches today. Even the Supreme Court voted on favor of two cases recently. The U.S. Supreme Court voted for a Christian bakery shop in Colorado and a florist in Washington that were being sued and being sued for a lot of money thousands of dollars being sued by the homosexual community and threatened by the homosexual community because they wouldn't bake a cake or decorate flowers for a homosexual wedding that they did not approve of, they did not agree with. And you see, even in Canada, like an evangelist who's facing two years in prison for sharing the gospel at a Toronto gay festival a couple of years ago, now he's being tried for hate speech in, in Canada. You have things like Mr. Trudeau, who wouldn't even name the, who wouldn't even say the name Christians when he asked about the persecution in the Middle East. You have more and more of these things happening. That if you don't agree with transgenderism, and if you don't agree with homosexual marriage, you're automatically labeled a bigot and a homophobe. Now this is happening in the Western democracies more and more, and people are seeing the trend. Even Professor. Uh, in, in, uh, a professor in Toronto, Jordan Peterson, even warned Christians recently about the freedoms, the religious freedoms that are eroding, especially in Canada. Governments and laws are being made more and more against the people of faith. 
So what are Christians to do when you really can't find a local church, a scriptural-based church, a church that will uphold Christian values and the biblical doctrine of the scriptures, and the governments of the world and laws around the world, especially in the Western world, are coming up against the people of faith. I, I live in, in a liberal state in the United States, many parts of Canada. They're making laws more and more against people of faith. And since you can't find a decent church, it seems like the spirit of Antichrist is already at work in media, in academic institutions, in society, in education, even in the church. It seems like the spirit of Antichrist is already at work, like the scripture says, and the kingdom of Antichrist is already looming. However, the Holy Spirit is preparing His people for the return of Jesus. He's preparing God's people at a time of preparation and strengthening. The book of Revelation talks about strengthening the things that remain. Believers are meeting in homes. They're having fellowship with one another. They're meeting together. They're having that fellowship that it's needed, like in the book of Acts. That is a wonderful thing. One concern that I have with groups like that, of course, would be that they simply gather together uh, on the basis of how they've been burnt by bad churches. Basically, they find uh, a refuge place and they become sort of refugees in a sense of the basis of fellowship is how they were burnt by bad churches and their bad experiences. That should not be the basis of fellowship. The basis of fellowship should be the truth, the word of God, the gospel, Jesus, evangelism, the unity and the fellowship of the Spirit that Paul talks about, calling upon the name of the Lord together from a pure heart, as Paul told Timothy. You find true Christianity in the world where churches are being persecuted, where Christians are actually being persecuted, like in the third world and things like that. Persecution is something that Jesus said comes from the devil. It doesn't come from God, but he allows it to prove who is for him, who's really living for Jesus, and who's really committed to him and have no hope and confidence in this world. The world uh, have no confidence in, in the things of this world, I should say. This is, these are the Christians that will be ready for the rapture of the church, for the return of Jesus. Too many things are happening in our countries. Too many things are happening in the Western world that it leads us to understand that persecution is coming upon the Western democracies. The acceptance of homosexuality, the affirmation of homosexuality, not only by society, by, but by the church. By the church is affirming homosexuality, homosexual ordination, the killing of the unborn by the millions, and the persecution of those who oppose it, those who oppose Abortion, those who oppose homosexual marriage are being persecuted in society and even the church are affirming it. God's judgment is coming, but God will save his people from the wrath to come. But I'm talking to Christians. You need to be in fellowship. Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of one another. Forsake not the fellowship of one another. More and more you should do it as you see the day approaching. That day is, of course, referring to the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, the day of His wrath for the world and for the kingdom of Antichrist, and the day of Christ for the church, the rapture and the resurrection of the people of God. You need to be in fellowship. If we can't stand together, we won't be able to stand alone. The solution to bad churches is not no church at all. That's not the solution. The solution to bad churches is fellowship, in, this, in, in the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God, scriptural-based fellowship, coming together, strengthening one another, sharing the gospel together, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, as Jesus said to do, meaning sharing the things that are at hand today with people that need to know that the return of Jesus is near. I don't know which church people should go. The Holy Spirit will lead people to the right church. What I do know is what God says in His Word. Forsake not the fellowship of one another. You should do it more often as you see the day approaching. It is my heart and it is my prayer that our brothers and sisters in Canada, especially those we met, would fellowship together, would gather together for prayer. A church that prays together stays together. A family that prays together stays together. Believers that pray together stay together. That would gather for sharing the gospel some evangelism, meetings, meeting together, fellowship and study of the Word of God. 
Those are things that are necessary to strengthen the things that remain. So it's my prayer that that happens and that continues to happen and we prepare people for the return of Jesus. It is my prayer that I will see you soon and it's my heart looks forward to seeing you soon again. I appreciate your time and your attention. God bless you.